Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. We are going to be working on back bends, bridge pose, wheel pose, whatever you want to call it. So first we are going to warm our bodies up by coming into a downward dog. And we really want to encourage movement during this by doing some circles one way and then the other. Focus on leaning into your shoulders because we need them really nice and warmed up. After your down dog, come into a cobra pose by squeezing your glutes and pushing your hips into the floor. So down dog, push into the floor, chaturanga down, and cobra, or upward facing dog. Awesome guys, come into child's pose and then we are gonna move into puppy pose. So puppy pose is an excellent opener for the shoulders. And then we are gonna do a variation and focus on the backs of our arms by bringing our hands together over our head. You can also do puppy pose with blocks as I'm showing here. This just allows you to get further into the pose. So we should be opening up nice in the shoulders and activating our back for that curvature. And then we are going to do our variation by putting our elbows on the back, on the blocks, and bringing our hands together over our head. So squeeze your shoulder blades together during this and don't forget to breathe. It is an intense pose. Awesome. So now we're going to move into some hip opening um, warm ups because we need our hip flexors to be open enough to reach our full bridge pose. So stretch out your quads and open up those hip flexors. However is comfortable for you. So you can leave your foot like this, bring your foot up or bring your foot into your glute. Awesome job, guys. All right, so now come into your low lunge and you can either stay in the low lunge or bring your back foot up. And again, we are just focusing on the quads and the fronts of the hips. And the key to bridge pose is being able to keep the back and the glutes active to push that curvature in the spine. So if you have a wheel, we are going to use that now and just bring it to the top of your spine and try and keep your hands over your head while you are stretching with your wheel because that's the position that your arms are going to be in during your pose. So roll through this, try and get more and more comfortable and deeper into your spinal curvature. Don't forget to breathe while you're doing this and take it nice and easy. 
When I bring my head off of the wheel, I like to support it with my hands, just keeping in mind that your head weighs 8 to 10 pounds. That's a lot of pressure on your neck to pull that up. So you can move the wheel around. Here I've moved it lower on my spine just to try and get a little bit deeper into this stretch, preparing my spine for what I'm about to ask it to do. And if you feel any tingling in your arms, move out of the position you're in and warm up your arms a little bit more. That just means that uh, there's a nerve being pinched. So another thing I like to do to prepare for wheel pose is kind of like a modified fish pose. Um, so using the wheel, straighten your legs and try to get your hands to touch the ground while they're over your head. So this is really asking your body to lean into this curve. Awesome job, guys. This is a camel pose, but in an active way. We are gonna go three times tapping the floor if we can with our hands. And then I like to do three times tapping the floor with my hands closed, just so I get deeper into the pose. And then finally, just lean into this camel pose. Try and really prepare your body for the pose we are about to ask it to do. Excellent. So after curving your spine one way, I like to just curve it back the other way um, so that nothing gets pinched. And here I'm just doing active child's pose, moving in and out of that position. Right, and we are going to keep an active stretch going and we are going to go using our blocks into an upward facing dog and what I'm doing is moving from upward facing dog to a plank while on my block. And so you can do this however you feel comfortable. I'm really just trying to move my spine in and out of the curvature that I'm going to be asking it to do. And in one dip, I am trying to touch my knees to the ground. And in the next one, I am trying to touch my hips to the ground. Awesome, guys. So Let's move into the pose. So come onto your back. This is the way that I like to enter the pose for the first time, especially. And make sure your feet are a little bit wider than hip, di uh, hip distance apart. And then put your hands on the ground flat over your head and push your body up into wheel pose. So when I first started moving into wheel pose, I really couldn't stay in it for very long. And if that is the case with you, that is totally fine. Just keep working at it. Another variation I like to do is coming onto my tiptoes and then moving into a straight leg variation. When I found this straight leg variation, it really changed the depth that I was able to get into my shoulders. So I really encourage you to try the straight leg variation. Another thing you can do is lift one leg off the ground at a time. You can even straighten that leg. 
and when I first started doing this, I could just barely lift my foot for like half a second, but just keep working at it and it'll, it'll come to you and you'll find your balance. And then finally, I, I just like to breathe and pose and really be aware of what my body is feeling. And then when you are moving out of your pose, make sure you come down on the back of your head and not the top of your head. Thank you so much for joining me. Like and subscribe.